Okay, so welcome sa ating pangalawang session sa ating uh, RME online review. So sa hapon na to ay ating i-discuss ang electrical quantities. Okay. So una ay ating i-discuss kung ano yung dalawang branches ng electricity. So yung dalawang branches ng electricity, una is electrostatics which focuses on charges at rest. Tapos, ang pangalawa is electrodynamics which focuses on charges in motion. So, yung part ng static electricity, so we have the term static electricity. So, ang example ng static electricity is lightning. Bala yata yung spin. So, yung lightning. So, lightning is a movement of uh, charged particles from a negative uh, side to the positive side. So, yun ay example ng electrostatic. So, charges at rest. So, when there is movement, so it will create a static electricity. Now, when we go to electrodynamics, so yung electrodynamics is focuses on charges in motion. So, naglasan dito na natin uh, ina -ano, kung ano yung pagkakaiba ng DC at DC na uh, current. Then we have types of electricity. So we have DC current so electricity with constant polarity. We have the other one, alternating current electricity with changing polarity. So, kapag DC current, so the polarity is always constant to the whole flow of the current so it will be positive and negative then sa alternating current we have the so called frequency so frequency yung frequency is uh, describing or naglalarawan kung ano yung pagka change ng polarity per second for example in 60 seconds yung polarity mo is nagsi-change from positive to negative to negative to positive. So, for example, dalawang basis siya nag-change per second. So, your frequency will be 2 cycles per second. At yung ibang term for cycles per second is hertz. Okay. Now, we go to electrical charge. So, this will be the first electric electrical quantity. So, it is a body said to be electrically charged if there is an excess or a deficit of electron from its normal value. So if there is a deficit, so yung deficit is kakulangan or an excess or sobra ng uh, electrons sa isang atom from its normal values, then that charge is called is at is an ele el electrically charged particle. Okay, so we have here the term ion. So ion is a charged atom. So we have the the positively charged uh, ion is called a cation. The negatively charged is called an ion. Then we have the ionization. So this is the process of producing ions. So this is the transfer of electrons from one atom to another. So if there is a transfer of electrons from one atom to another, so we will create ions. So how does it work? So For example, we have here in atom, then meron siyang tatlong electron. The electron is go orbit outside the atom. We have again another atom na mayroong apat na electron. So, for example, the, the neutral atom or yung atom na talagang um, yung talagang atom na walang uh, hindi siya ionized so hindi siya charged atom. If ilan yung electrons, yan yung number ng protons. So, para dito, 
battery yung electrons niya so yung yung proton niya nasa loob nito yung nucleus so 3 din yung proton niya so if this one is 4 yung electrons so ito 4 din yung proton so if for example it itong isang electron to sa apat na ito sa transfer sa kabila ang mangyayari dito sa atom na to magiging apat na ang kanyang electron ito naman is magiging tatlo ang kanyang electron so ang nangyayari ngayon is dito sa unang sa unang atom na to mas madami ang kanyang electron kaysa kanyang proton. So, ito mas madami ang kanyang negative kaysa positive. So, itong atom na to ay nagiging neg negative discharge or nagiging an ayon. Abang ito naman, mas madaming proton kaysa electron. So, mas madaming positive kaysa negative. So, itong atom na to is nagiging positive discharge. At ito na ngayon na natawag natin card. Ayon. At itong process na to sa pagta-transfer ng electron from one atom to another is called ionization. Okay, so we have coulomb. So coulomb is the unit of electric charge which is equivalent to 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons or protons. So it is named after French physicist Charles A. Coulomb. So we have here the relationship. So yung one column is equal to 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. So it means na sa isang column may na, mayroong uh, equivalent na 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. And we have also potential the potential difference. So the other term for potential potential difference is voltage but voltage is a much broader mas mataki yung ano yung uh, yung sakop ng term na voltage but but usually potential difference belong also to the term or to the uh, to, to the territory ng voltage so the meaning of potential difference is the capability of doing work so any charge has a capability of moving another charge either by attraction or repulsion so the unit for potential difference so because it is voltage the unit for that is volt so if plural that will be Volt. So it is named after Alessandro Volta. So it is equivalent to one joule of work done per one column of charge. So ito yung equation niya in terms of the units. So we have one volt is equal to one joule per one column. And this will be the formula in terms of their um of their um mathematical presentation so we have e that this is the potential difference is equal to w which is for the work over the q which is the charge so the e the potential difference the unit for that is volts the work done that will be in joules and the charge so this will be in column okay So we have electric current. So electric current or sa Tagalog is kuryente. So that is the motion of electron per unit time. Okay. So the motion of electron per unit time. So for example, if we have a certain wire. So this is the other side of the wire is connected to a positive terminal. Sa kabila naman is negative. So the electrons electrons will be flowing from this terminal mula sa negative terminal papuntang positive at yung flow nila yung flow is what we call as current or electric current so the the quantity o yung o yung laki ng current is dependent sa charge 
kasi yung charge is how we quantify the number of electrons paano natin papehwati yung dami ng electrons per unit time so kada oras kasi ito is flowing so cons there uh, maybe at a certain uh, time 1 second or 2 seconds hina yung current bibilis sa after 5 seconds so the quantity of current or the value of current is always dependent to the charge and the time so next we have ampere so ampere is the unit of electric current so the equivalent of um, 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb per 1 second so we could write this one 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb per 1 second then we have resistance so resistance is the total opposition to the flow of electrons in a circuit so its effect on a circuit is evident by the dissipation of heat so the resistance is the total opposition so yun yung kumukontra sa flow of electrons in a circuit then paano natin malalaman kung may resistance so there is the dissipation of heat or yung isang uh, conductor yung isang bagay is magiinit so if there is a much higher um, tim temperature reading or mas mataas yung uh, temperatura ng isang conductor therefore that conductor has a higher resistance so ohm is the unit for resistance it is named after george simon ohm okay so if we are going to have an illustration between resistance voltage and current so we could have the analogy of a faucet faucet tapos nasa sa duro ng faucet is meron tayong hose okay tapos lalabas dyan ang tubig okay so dito yung valve natin o yung gripo natin yung pressure ng tubig na garing sa gripo yan yung tinatawag natin voltage so yan yung analogy nya tapos yung flow ng tubig sa tubo or sa hose, ito yung ating current. So, nasa ngayon ang resistance? If ating uh, ibablock dito, kunyari ating i-twist yung hose natin, ang mangyayari, hihina yung flow ng tubig. So, itong blockage dito, itong pag-twist natin ng tubo, ang tawag dyan is resistance. So, yan yung analogy ng um, tatlo ng current voltage uh, current voltage and resistance if you have resistance in a wire this is the most important um, formula in terms of uh, resistance na po natin i-apply sa isang conductor so we have the short term for this one is R plus where in resistance R is equal to the resistivity is rho times the length over the area okay so r natin that will be resistance so ang unit niya is ohms our rho so that will be our resistivity resistivity so the unit for that is if you are going for the si system that is ohm meter then our length so that would be L so length so it's the length of the wire so the unit for that would be in meters and our A is the cross-sectional area cross-sectional area and this will be in square so, sa formula na to, if, for example, a certain wire, if the area of the wire is increased, the resistance will decrease. Kasi nasa 
ibaba yung um, area. So, if we, it is inversely proportional. So, if we are going to increase the quantity on this uh, on this area, so, ang mangyayari, kasi inversely proportional siya sa ating resistance, mag-decrease ang kanyang value. So, kaya if yung wire, uh, yung wire, pag mas malaki, habang lumalaki yung uh, size ng wire is habang lumalaki yung size ng wire ang nangyayari sa resistance ng wire na yon is lumiliit din now we go, if we are going to go with the length so if our length is increased so ang mangyayari naman sa ating um, resistance it will also increase kasi yung length at yung resistance are proportional or directly proportional. So, kung ano yung value na mangyayari to sa length, yun din yung mangyayari sa resistance. If we're going to increase resistance, then our ah, if we're going to increase our length, then our resistance will also increase. Then, the resistivity, this is constant. Always constant. Constant and it will just depend on the material. So, nakadepende sa klase ng conductor. So, copper has a different resistivity. Um, aluminum has a also different resistivity. So, nakadepende yon kung ano yung klase ng material na ginagamit sa wire. So, pag yung area ng wire is uh, nag-increase, so yung resistance will, be, will decrease. If the length increase, then the resistance will increase and your resistivity will only depend on the type of conductor or in the material of the wire so you have a specific resistivity or specific resistance or resistivity so the resistance offered by a unit cube of a material so ito yung sinasabi natin rho okay, so the unit for rho so if there are many units of rho depending on how we quantify the cube so the cube of the material so if the si system that will be ohm meter we have also the ohm centimeter we are also ohm feet so kadalasan sa philippine electrical code so usually that will be ohm kilometer lalo na yung mga malalaki na wire then sa ano naman sa neck naman that this will be ohm mile because English system yung ginagamit ng US. Then you have the circular mill. So this is another unit of um, giving the sizes of a wire. So the area of a circle having a diameter of 1 mil. So that is a circular mill. So 1 mil. So ito, wala itong isang L. Ito. So 1,000 mil is equal to 1 inch. And 1 mcm is equal to 1,000 cm. So to just to clarify yung shortcut ng circular mill are both capital C and M so that is circular mill so the one circular mill or the formula for circular mill is circular mill is equal to the diameter of a circle squared so given that the diameter of the circle is the unit for that is in mill okay so Yung kadalasan natin ginagamit na sizes ng wire, lalo na pang yung EWG. So, we know this one as the American Wire Gauge. So, the sizes of this one, number 14, number 12, number 10. So, they are usually given in CM or circular mill. So, yung malalaki na ginagamit nila is the MCM or the Mega Circular Mill. So, it, it is important for us to know kung paano i-convert yung circular mill into mill, into inches, and into centimeter para we could have the relationship between the different uh, units of area of wires. Then, we have effects of temperature in resistance. So, an increase in temperature so is very important. An increase in a temperature of wire or a system will result in an increase of resistance. So, if, for example, your wire is heated, 
So, if it is heated, pag yung wire is ininit, then, yung resistance ng wire na yun is mag-i-increase. So, we could say that one that the temperature is directly proportional to your resistance. Okay, so we have this formula. Ito yung formula. So, ito pag given yung T, which is the absolute uh, temperature. Okay, so R1 over R2 is equal to T over T plus T sub 1 over T plus T sub 2. So, yung T is the absolute temperature. Ito yung temperature na kung saan yung uh, yung wire mo ay may pinakamababang um pinakamababang resistance. It is between uh, the wire becoming an insulator and a conductor or some, some of them call that as the, the wire becoming a semiconductor. So, itong alpha T sub 1. So, yung alpha T sub 1, ito yung formula niya. So, it, it also involves the absolute temperature and your initial temperature. Ito namang delta T. So, this will just be the change in temperature. So, T1 minus, at ito minus T1 or final temperature minus the initial temperature. We have the characteristics of common conductors. So, ito na yun. So, we have silver. So, silver, the resistivity of silver is 9.9 .9 ohm circular mil per feet. So, ito kasi capital na the circular mil per feet. So, ito yung uh, sa silver, sa copper that will be 10.37 sa aluminum that will be 17, tungsten 33, zinc 36 so if there is a question dito if alin sa limang ito ang pinaka best conductor, so the lower your resistivity the higher the conductivity so ang mayayari nito sa limang ito, ito yung pinaka best conductor okay so ang pinaka uh, hindi masyadong best so this will be this one zinc, yung tungsten yan yung kadalasan ginagamit natin sa ating mga incandescent bulb yung aluminum it is usually used in conductors uh, as, as a conductor or as a wire because it's much cheaper compared to copper and copper is much cheaper also compared to silver usually silver is used on high voltage installation of high voltage wires then we have the absolute temperature for silver that will be 243 and its equivalent temperature coefficient at 20 degrees is 0 0.038 meaning at, at EV increase of um, 30, 20 degrees so yung 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 resistance ng silver will increase at 0 0.038 8. So, if if atin ding dito, mas okay yung silver when uh, it is subjected to temperature kasi medyo mababa yung pag-increase ng kanyang temperature. Sa lima na ito, masasabi natin yung zinc yung mas pinakababa but we know that the resistivity of uh, zinc yung ohm circular mer per feet is also higher. So, therefore, talaga, yung pinaka-best na uh, conductor is silver. Then, we have the resistance coefficient of this. So, the ohmic change per degree per ohm as some specified temperature. So, ito na yun, yung alpha natin. Okay. Then, we have conductance. So, conductance is the measure of the material's ability to conduct electric current. So, it is reciprocal of resistance so then for conductance is Siemens so it is uh, called formerly noon tinatawag natin mo so which is a reverse of the unit for resi resistance which is ohm but now it is called uh, Siemens so this is the formula for this uh, conductance so your G is conductance then your R is your resistance. So basically, your conductance is reciprocal to your resistance. So for example, if you, your resistance is 10 ohms, 
So your conductance is just 1 over 10 and it will be 0 0.1 Siemens and that will be the answer. So capital S kasi pag ginawa niya yung small letter S so that will be 0 0.1 seconds. Iba yung seconds sa uh, Siemens. Okay? So ngayon magsasolve tayo. Okay, so we have this one. A piece of wire has a conductance of 20 shimens. So its resistance is black. So let's try to solve this one. Okay. So we give in the conductance G is 20 ohms. So we know from the previous slide na yung conductance natin is equal to the reciprocal of our resistance in gamitin natin yung narasyon sa algebra so itong r ilipat natin dito that will be r over 1 over g so we can now solve for our uh, conduct our resistance so we join money dito sa unit ng conductance this is not ohms but shields that will be 1 over 20 shimens so capital S para hindi may seconds then we we'll use our calculator so buti natin calculator natin so we have 1 over 20 and this will be equal to 0 0.05 so our answer is our answer is equal to 0 0.05 ohms um, so ito yung correct answer then next example so a wire has a diameter of 0 0.125 inch and its cross-sectional area what is its cross-sectional area in circular means so, ito involves now the circular wheel. So, we know that circular wheel CM is equal to D squared. Where your D is your um, diameter of wire. The diameter of wire na dapat ang unit ng wire. And then, that diameter is in mil. But, our given... So we need to convert inch into mil. So ano yung ang natin paano dito to convert? So if we're going back to our slides. circular wheel Oops. 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 but we know that the that 1000 uh, so slice not so slide natin last time the 1000 mil is equal to 1 inch so yan yung relationship ng mil to inch so we could now convert this one 0 0.125 inch so sa baba yung inch so we have 1000 mil over 1 inch so mayayin ito kaya ilagay natin sa ibaba yung inch para makansin natin siya dito so meron lang tayong 0 0.125 times 1000 mil so yung unit natin now is in mil
substitute our d sa ating formula ito sa taas so, circular mean is equal to d squared and is equal to 125 mean squared so our circular mean is equal to Six to five, so we have fifteen thousand six hundred twenty five circular mean. At to your answer, natin. So, ito tayo sa next na problem. A positively charged dielectric has a charge of um, two ohms, a uh, two coulombs. So if 12.5 times the power of 18 free electrons are added to it. What will be the effect of the set die on the set die electric? Okay. So, so ano natin given natin is meron tayo yung isang charge so, na 2 columns siya. Tapos mag-add tayo na 12.5 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. So, ito, convert mga natin to into charge. Ano yung charge nito? Okay. So, this is 12.5. Okay. So, 12.5 times 10 to the power of negative 18. Ah, ito na ito. Power of 18. So, times... So, this is electrons. So, ang ating one column is equivalent to 6.25. So, nasa previous slide natin to. Times 10 to the power of negative 18. Uh, not negative, but 18. Uh, times 10 to the power of negative 18. So cancel. So na natin 12.5 over 6.25 column. So hindi natin i-calculate. This will be equal to 2 column. But remember, this is electrons. So ano yung charge nito? So the charge of this one will be negative. Okay. So we have now, we have tayo yung 2 column na charge. We add natin ang electrons na mayroon din charge na negative 2 column. So, ano yung total charge? So, what would be the net charge or the total charge of the said dielectric? So, yung total natin is i-add na natin yung dalawa. 2 column plus negative 2 column. So, we have positive i-add din ang negative. Same yung kanilang ano, quantity. So, maging 2 minus 2 and this will be equal to 0 column. At ito na yung Converting our given to into its equivalent charge. Okay, next we have this one. A, ba a battery can deliver 10 joules of energy to move 5 columns of charge. So, what is the potential difference between the terminals of the battery? Okay, so, solution. So, dito naman tayo sa potential difference. So, sa ating previous slide, as discussed, um, the potential difference E is equal to the amount of work done, which is W over the charge, which is column. So, yung uh, ating given. So, yung work natin, unit natin is joule. So, ating work is equivalent to 10. Our charge is Q. So, this is equal to 5 columns. So, this is 10 joules, 5 columns. So, substitute lang natin sa ating formula. So, we have D is equal to 10 joules over 
5 columns and this is equal to 5 divided by uh, 10 divided by 5 this will be 2 unit ng potential difference is volts and this is our answer substation bus bar is made up of 12 inches round copper bars 20 feet long so what is the resistance of each bar if the resistivity is 1.764 times 10 the power of negative 18 centimeter so this this problem will now involve the uh, resistance in the conductor in a wire so yung magiging natin formula natin is using the R plus so R is equal to resistivity times length over area okay so first we will try to analyze the given so we have 2 inches round copper bars so 2 inches round copper bar so it is 2 inches so the diameter of our bus bar is 2 inches okay then the length so 20 feet long so the length nothing is 20 feet and we have also our resistivity which is equal to 1.764 times 10 to the power of negative 6 ohm centimeter okay so let's just first analyze the given Let's so, compare natin yan sa ating formula. So may length tayo, check. Meron tayong resistivity, check. Wala tayong area. Okay, so wala tayong area but we are given with the diameter. Tapos ang sinabi nito is round copper bus bar. So meaning round siya. Ibig sabihin nito, we could solve for our um, area by using the formula of a circle. So area is equal to pi d squared over 4. If hindi kayo masyadong familiar sa formula ito, you can use the uh, pi r squared. Okay, pi r squared. So that is involved with the radius. So uh, your radius is only uh, twice, a uh, half of the diameter. So yung 2 inches, gawin nyo lang 1 inch. So Natin. So our area is equal to pi r squared. So our pi, our diameter, two inches. So our radius nyan is divided two. That will be one inch. So we will have a squared. So we will have pi inch squared. So yan yung magiging unit. Ay yung magiging area natin. Okay, so next, meron na tayong area, meron na tayong uh, given lahat sa area na. We will try to check now the units. For our length, the unit is in feet. So, highlight natin ito, feet. For our resistivity, for our resistivity, our unit is ohm centimeter. For our area, inch squared. Okay, so, hindi magkapareha yun. So, dapat the units are uniform in order for us to substitute that given in the formula. So, dito, i-base natin yung unit natin sa resistivity. So, dapat, yung unit natin is centimeter lahat. So, i-convert natin to into centimeter, ito then into centimeter. Okay. So, first, convert natin yung area. So, area is equal to pi inch squared. So, pagkakarin na lang natin. Kung tipo sa mga inch squared. So, 2.54, yan yung equivalent ng 1 inch. Centimeter is equivalent to 1 inch. I-square natin yan. So, maka-cancel to. Cancel to. So, we're left with pi times 2.54 squared inch squared. Okay, so gamitin natin yung calculator natin.
57 inch squirt then ano minian inch pala kasi nagcompare pa tayo this would be in centimeter okay centimeter squared so this will be centimeter squared tapos yung length natin yung convert natin sa centimeter so yung 20 feet times 12 inches so i-convert natin sa inches so to 1 foot times itong inches natin i-convert natin sa centimeter 2.54 centimeter over 1 inch so cancel yung inch cancel yung feet so we're left with 20 times 12 times 2.54 centimeter Uh, 609.6 centimeter. Okay. So, that is converted to centimeter. So, we could now use our formula. So, we have our R is equal to 1.764 times 10 to the power of negative 6 ohm centimeter. Our length is 609.6 cm tapos yung area natin is 20.27 uh, cm squared so cancel yung centimeter so we're left with unit of ohms wire is 126.48 ohms at 100 degrees Celsius and 100 ohms at 30 degrees Celsius. So determine the temperature coefficient of copper at 0 degrees. So we have here our solution. So slot natin yung given natin. So our R1 is 126.48 ohms So, yung temperature 1 natin is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. Tapos, yung R2 natin is equal to 100 ohms. Yung D2 natin is equal to 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, so, yung formula natin, we have R2 over R1 is equal to D plus D2 over D plus D1. So, ang hinahanap dito 
is the temperature of coefficient of copper at 0 degrees Celsius. So, in hanap ito is alpha 0 degrees. Ang formula ito is 1 over T plus yung plus natin is T sub 0. So, we could have that one as 1 over T plus 0 kasi 0 degrees Celsius tayo. Okay. So, first, kailangan natin masolve yung T. So, isa sa substitute natin yung mga given. So, our R2 is 100 ohms over R1 which is 126.48 ohms. Okay, then our T, so yan yung hinahanap natin. Our T2 is uh, 30 degrees Celsius. Tapos, our T1 is 100 degrees Celsius. So, ito natin simplify natin ito sa si Marco Pinitor. Zero point. 
four two three. So our answer is our first one was the four point three times the number of kinetic three. And this will be and for this one is ohms per ohms per Celsius degree. And this now will be our answer. Okay, so that will be all for our online session for this weekend so thank you for attending this online session thank you for your time and as always uh, keep on studying and also as we don't know so you can still uh, enter our group uh, group platform our online platform for our review so the description is uh, down below this video and Tune in for uh, next Saturday for another uh, discussion which will be about Ohm's Law. I hope you learned something. So as always again, enjoy the